Good morning again. Good morning. As Brother Larry mentioned a moment ago, we certainly appreciate you being here uh, this morning. If you would, open in your Bible to Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. We're going to be studying about two sisters that are talked about in the Word of God. And, uh, of course, we know Mary and Martha quite well. We've heard about them, read about them many, many times. By the way, we're about done with all the ones on the, the favorite childhood stories. I've got just a few more left, so if you have one that we haven't done yet, then let me know, and uh, I'll try to incorporate it, but we're about done with this series, and you're probably thinking, well, I'm glad. <laughs> Uh, we started in January, so we've been going through this for quite a while, but uh, each one of them have been their own kind of different story, so I think it's worked out well. I do appreciate your comments and your encouragement. Uh, I also, uh, and Brother uh, Larry mentioned it a moment ago, but there are flyers out in the foyer, and we do encourage you to pick those up, hand those out. Uh, there are also some of these out there that have the uh, gospel meeting on it, which is a little bit smaller format, so you can either grab the flyer or grab both, but take those, hand those out if you're walking into these. are pretty good when you're eating at the restaurant. Just lay it down on the table on the restaurant when you get through, and, and make sure to tip them. <laughs> Don't give them a penny and a card and say... <laughs> Make sure you give a good tip when you give this because we don't want to get to people saying, I ain't going over there. No. But anyway, those are out on the table in the foyer. Make sure and pick those up and, have, and avail yourself to that opportunity. As we said, the gospel meeting is quickly approaching. By the way, there is also a sign-up sheet out there in the foyer, uh, Feed the Preacher. So if you would like to feed the preacher either uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, let us know about that. that you can sign up on the table in the foyer. Let's, let's now turn our attention to the Word of God. And we're going to talk about these two sisters that in many ways uh, they are much alike as far as we can tell from the Word of God. And yet there's some differences that we're going to see. So we've entitled this A Tale of Two Sisters, uh, Mary and Martha. And of course the text that we're going to look at begins... In verse number 38, the Bible says, Now it came to pass as they, and uh, we'll delve into this more in detail in just a few moments, but the they are the disciples that are traveling with Jesus. And you remember that earlier in the chapter, Jesus had sent out the 70s. Uh, the 70, they went out by twos. Y'all remember this? Uh, so they went out by twos and... Uh, they evangelized in only in Israel. They were not to go to anyone outside the nation of Israel. And so they've been out traveling. They've been out preaching the gospel. And so they come back and they are gathered together with Jesus. And uh, so that's the they. Now at this point, we don't know if that includes the entire 70 and all the entourage. If, if that is who it is, then uh, Martha had a big job on her hand. Uh, you know, you stop and think about that. If you're going to entertain 70 plus people, that's a, that's a mighty big order. And that may be partly why uh, she's, did I say Mary Martha? And maybe why that she, she acted the way that she did because uh, that's a large crowd. So it came to pass, verse 38, is they, Jesus and his disciples went they entered into a certain village, and of course we know from other texts that that village is Bethany. So they entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. So again, we don't know exactly who all comes into the house with Jesus, but she opens her door, and that tells us that uh, Martha was a woman that was very hospitable, and of course we know that she opened her house apparently on many occasions for Jesus and his disciples. And so Martha received him into her house and she had called her sister Mary, uh, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Verse number 40, but Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, 
Dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful. And listen to the language that Jesus uses. And Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Now I'm going to say as we begin this, Martha through the years has been given a pretty bad rap on the way that she acted at this point. And hopefully when we get through with this lesson, we'll delve in a little bit deeper. And I hope you will see the kind of woman that Martha really is and marry her sister along with her. So let's do a little bit of background before we actually uh, go in and examine the text itself. There's no doubt that Mary and Martha and their brother Lazarus was quite loved by Jesus Christ. Just keep your finger here. Turn with me to John chapter 11 for just a moment. John chapter 11. By the way, Lord willing, next Sunday we will talk about Lazarus being raised from the dead. No, wait, we did that, didn't we? I'll have to look at my notes. Now I said that and I thought, did we already talk about Lazarus? I don't, I, don't, I, I don't remember, so I'll look. But anyway, in John 11, it says in verse number 5, now Jesus loved Martha and her sister, and of course we know that's Mary that he's talking about, and Lazarus. So as we said a moment ago, the Bible clearly tells us that Jesus had a very close and unique relationship with not only Mary and Martha, but also with their brother, brother Lazarus. And also the text tells us in John chapter 11 that they were very well known in the city of Bethany. In John chapter 11, in verse 17, when Jesus came, he found him, uh, he had laid in the grave four days earlier. He found that they had laid him in the grave four days earlier. Now, Bethany was nigh or close to Jerusalem, about 15 furlongs off. Verse 19, and many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. So uh, not only apparently were they well known in Bethany, but if I understand the implication of this text, not only the city of Bethany turned out, but there were people that came down from Jerusalem because Jerusalem was very close. And so the implication is you've got not only the city of Bethany that comes out, but you also have those that come down from Jerusalem, which is a couple of miles away. And so they come down to comfort Martha and Mary over the loss of their brother. And by the way, it's not uncommon for people to travel great distances for a funeral like this. I mentioned in Bible class, uh, Sister June Thomas passed away. Her funeral was Friday. There were people from New Mexico and, and all over that came to that funeral. And so it's not uncommon for people to travel great distance, distances if they've got a family member or a friend who has died. And so the city of Bethany apparently comes out. Uh, the Bible says those of Jerusalem, uh, about a couple of miles off, they came, many of the Jews came down, and they came down to comfort them. And so Mary, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus were well known in that area. Not only that, Martha knew exactly who Jesus was. Now, I don't know at what point she knew this, but notice as we begin in John 11 and verse 20, Martha as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. So Martha, and, and as we read uh, from Luke chapter 10, Jesus kind of chided Martha about the way she was acting. That did not cause her to grow angry. Have you ever seen somebody get chided and they stomp their feet? Well, I'll never do that again. You know, that's not Martha. That's not what we read in the Word of God. And I would caution us that if we're chided, if we're corrected, instead of getting angry 
And getting mad at the person who corrects us, look into ourselves, as Paul said in 2 Corinthians 13, 5, examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. We need to look into ourselves and say, is that a legitimate concern? Have I been acting like that? And if it is, then we need to make sure we make a correct change, right? Don't get angry just because someone had corrected you. And so Martha, when she hears that Jesus was coming, the Bible says in verse 20, she went out to meet him. Uh, he hasn't apparently made it to the village of Bethany yet. Martha hears he's coming. She goes out to meet him. Mary stays in the house. And then said Martha, verse 21, unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. Jesus, if you had been here, Lazarus would not have died. Of course, we know that Jesus had opportunity to come earlier. He knew that Lazarus was sick before he died, but Jesus did not come. And we know, of course, that Jesus did that for a specific reason. He knew he was going to raise Lazarus, and so he doesn't come when Lazarus is sick. Could Jesus have healed him when he was sick? Yes, and Martha knew that. And then she says this, But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it to thee. I want you to think about the faith of this lady. Implied in that statement, if I, if I am not mis... Lord, even to this good moment, you could do something. Jesus saith unto her, in verse 23, Thy brother shall rise again. Well, I know that Lazarus is going to get up. He's going to rise again. So she was not of the sect of the Sadducees who didn't believe in a resurrection. She believed in a physical resurrection. She knew that that body that was going into the grave is going to be raised. And Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 15, that body that went in the grave is a physical corrupt body. The body that comes out of the grave is going to be tra changed, transformed. It's going to be a spiritual incorruptible body. Now, I don't know what that looks like. Noah, none of us knows what it looks like, but we know in 1 John 3, in verse 2, that we'll be like Jesus, and that'll be plenty. But there is going to be a resurrection of that body that goes into the grave. And Martha knew that. So she says in verse 24, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And then Jesus saith unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth, and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? And notice what happens in verse 27. Martha says to Jesus, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. You know, in Matthew chapter 16, when Peter made that pronouncement, Jesus said, Blessed art thou, Simon of John. Flesh and blood has not revealed that unto you. So here is Martha making the very same confession. We'll save that for later. But no doubt, Jesus loved Martha, Mary, Lazarus. They were known in their community roundabout. And not only that, Martha knew that Jesus was the Christ the Son of God, the Old Testament Messiah that had been promised since Genesis 3 and verse 15. She says, I know who you are, Jesus, and I know what you can do. Jesus, as we read a moment ago, let's turn back now to Luke chapter 10, has been traveling through the countryside with his 70 disciples, and they have been preaching the gospel. His fame is growing at this point, and because of the growth of his fame, People are now beginning to question Jesus. And you realize this, that uh, when someone, when you're, when you're not uh, very well known, 
People don't care. It's kind of like David as we were studying in 1 Samuel this morning. And he said, well, I'm nothing but a flea. Why are you out here chasing me? You know, and so when you're out there and nobody knows who you are, then people don't really care. But now Jesus is starting to get some fame. And so the Bible tells us that they began to question him. And you remember that these 70, and we're in Luke chapter 10, they had returned with joy because the Bible says that even those uh, demons that had possessed people were under their authority. That's in Luke 10 and verse number 17. But because of his fame, it says in verse 25 that a certain lawyer stood up and tested him. King James says, tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? So this man, well versed in the uh, law of Moses, he is a lawyer, and so his degree is in the law of Moses. And just like lawyers today, they have their degree in whatever particular field of law they have chosen. Well, under the law of Moses, the lawyers were versed in the law of Moses. That was their constitution. If you want to use that terminology, that was their law book. And so this man knew the law of Moses. And so she asked, or excuse me, he asked Jesus, saying, well, Master, what do I need to do to turn it, uh, inherit eternal life? And Jesus then responded to him, well, what do you find written in the Word of God? How do you read it? And he answered correctly. He says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And Jesus said, You've answered correctly. Verse number 28 now notice this, this do, and thou shalt live. You know, the Bible is so filled with statements about don't just hear the word of God, do the word of God. And so then Jesus teaches uh, this parable, this story of the Good Samaritan. And you remember, we're not going to read it, we've already studied it in this series, but you remember that this a uh, lesson is a lesson on servitude. You've got a man who is a Samaritan who helps someone by all implications who is a Jewish man who's been robbed and left in the ditch. The Bible says half dead. The priest walks by, goes and looks, and then he, he goes on. The Levite pauses and looks, and then he goes on, and then you've got this Samaritan who was despised by the Jewish people who stops sees a person in need. He doesn't see any uh, race in that because they're, they're, they're a little bit different in race. The, the Samaritans were part Jew. They were part Gentile. And because of that fact, they were despised by both peoples. And so they were kind of outcasts. And so he sees this man who by every account or every indication seems to be a Jewish man that's laying there in the ditch. And this Samaritan, the Bible says, had compassion. And he helped that man. And Jesus, in ending the story of the Samaritan, said in verse 37, again Luke 10, in verse 37, the, one, or the, the lawyer said, the one that showed mercy on him. Who was his neighbor? Well, the one that helped. And Jesus said, go and do thou Likewise, So Jesus had just taught about servitude and serving people. I don't know if that influences what we're about to read or not, but we read it a moment ago, so let's think about what we read. Um, Martha is burdened with service. Uh, by the way, brethren, the Bible calls God's people to be servants. Jesus was a servant. We're all to be servants. There is absolutely nothing wrong with being a servant. And so Martha is not doing anything wrong in serving people. There's nothing wrong in what she's doing in serving people, right? And so Martha is serving those people. As we mentioned a moment ago, it says in verse 38, it came to pass as they went and uh, the the. They, as we've already indicated a moment ago, 
may have been the entire 70 and maybe even more. We don't know how many people were traveling with Jesus at this point. And so he enters into a certain village, as we said a moment ago. This is Bethany. There was a certain woman named Martha who received him into her house. Uh, you know, when you look at it, uh, Martha, there's indication we don't know. There's not a lot of information about her. About, about her. We don't know if she was married and uh, widowed. We don't know if she's married and the husband is still alive. We don't have all those details, but we do know this. Mary and Martha were close followers of Jesus Christ. And if this is her house, as the text we just read a moment ago, if she is alone in this household, she was a woman that was of pretty good means to be able to do the things that she did. And so the Bible says in verse 38, she received him into her house and she had called, uh, she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. So the scenario is Jesus come into my house, don't know how many people are there, but Jesus, as he often did, is going to use this as an opportunity to sit down and teach. And so as Jesus is teaching, and again, we don't know how many is involved in all of this, but Mary sits and listens to what Jesus has to say. Martha, verse 40, was cumbered about much serving. And again, depending on the number, even if it's just a handful, six or eight men, whatever, however many it is, it's still going to be a burdensome job. And by the way, brethren, and you know this, women do so much for the kingdom of God. That, that is a, a, one of the things that I think that we have overlooked in the past. I think there's been two extremes that we've gone to when it comes to the serving of women. And we need to understand that women have a very important role. Uh, I think it was uh, maybe Napoleon who said many, many years ago that a, an army moves on its stomach. And what he was saying by that is every one of those soldiers has to be fed three meals a day, right? And so that's why when you look at the the military, you look at the number who actually do the fighting, and you knew you look at the number of those who are in support roles. Well, they can't fight if they don't have the supporting roles that are going on behind the scenes. And so truly, an army does move on its stomach. And we appreciate so much that we have a congregation full of ladies who know how to feed us and take care of us and do not only that, but the spiritual work that is involved as well. And so this is a job that is underappreciated by all means. The job, the work that ladies do in helping the congregation. So Martha is cumbered about with much serving. So she comes to Jesus and she said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone. I think we can all sympathize with Martha at that point. You ladies, I know, can sympathize even more than the men can in that part. Here she is working and laboring, no doubt sweating, cooking the meal, serving the people, and, and you can just almost see the ex uh, exasperation on her face. I, I, I'm, I'm in the kitchen. I'm serving, I'm doing all this, and Mary's sitting there not lifting a finger at her. So she's a little bit put out at her sister Mary for not getting up and helping her. So then Martha says this, Jesus, would you tell her to get up and help me? <laughs> would you tell her to quit lounging around and get up and help me? And then, of course, when we think about that, we think about Mara, uh, Mara, uh, Mary. By the way, the, the Hebrew word is, uh, it is either Mara, Miriam, goes back to Miriam, uh, going all the way 
way back to Moses' sister. And, and by the way, I don't know if there's any implication in this. It means rebellion, <laughs> rebellious. So I, I don't know, uh, uh, Mary, <laughs> our Mary back here, you know, uh, but it means rebellious. But anyway, Mary is a lady who is sitting here uh, sometimes, as we said, a, a, a Marie, Mary, Miriam. So she's sitting here and she is listening to Jesus. And by the way, the text doesn't tell us that Mary may have helped her in the beginning. She may have helped prepare the meal. We don't know any of those details. But in the end, while Martha's doing all this work of servitude, Mary is listening to what Jesus teaches. She's sitting at his feet and listening to what Jesus is teaching. And then, of course, those words that have now become quite famous, Jesus said, Martha, Martha. He says, you're, you're careful. You're, you're very diligent. Uh, you're, you're, you're not one that does things haphazardly. And you're troubled about a lot of things. And, uh, you know, uh, when you think about the history of ladies working in the church, you know, you, you think about the ladies that diligently serve and help and work. And there's a lot of thought that goes into that. You know, you, 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 again, as men, I don't know that we fully sympathize with all that the ladies do. We're going to have a potluck in a couple of weeks. Oh, well, you know, well, there's a lot of ladies that are concerned about what's going to, how that's going to transpire. Is everything going to be ready? Everything going to be laid out? There's going to be plenty of food. Are going to be plenty of paper or, or plates for us to eat off of? Is the tea going to be ready? Is the coffee going to be ready? Somebody's going to want sweet tea. Somebody's going to want unsweet tea. So there's a lot of preparation that goes into that. And Martha was burdened with that uh, job of getting everything ready. But Martha had let it go a little bit too far if I'm understanding the text. None of those things are wrong in and of themselves, but I've said this before and, and I, 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 I think I'm right. The ladies are very diligent about those things and very concerned about those things and the men are saying, just throw a bologna sandwich on the plate, I'll eat it. <laughs> you know, the men are not necessarily distraught about those things, but you ladies doing the work, you're like, there's a lot of work going into this. So Jesus very tenderly and compassionately says, Martha, I know that this is an important job and it has to be done. But what Jesus does in this text is remind her that as important as those things are, there's something that is more important. There's something that matters more. And that is those things which relate to eternity. I think you've probably seen the little cartoon of the preacher that walks into the potluck and, he, and it says the preacher's nightmare came true. There's only green bean casserole for everybody. <laughs> you know, I don't know many preachers that have that dream, but maybe there are some. But, uh, you know, it, it, it's that idea, okay, if it's just green bean casseroles, is that okay? Well, I would say yes. I would say yes. So Jesus concludes this by saying in verse 42, there's one thing that is needful. Martha, there's one thing that you're leaving out. There's one thing that you are forgetting. And Mary had chosen that good part. Mary made the right choice. Martha did what she did in full honesty and everything. And Jesus is saying, you know, Martha, if we had a bologna sandwich, we would all be okay. And Mary has stopped and she has listened and he says, I will not take that away from her. I will not take that away from her. You know, when you think about this, 
as I mentioned earlier, Martha was corrected by Jesus in the way she was serving. Not doing it right. You need to understand there's something that's more important. And as I mentioned a moment ago, sometimes when we're corrected, especially when you look at this, it may have even been right there in front of everybody. And he's like, Martha, you need to, you need to think. There's something that's more important. Mary has chosen that part. See, sometimes we get mad and we say, I'll never do it again. But let's turn to John chapter 12. And this is where we'll wrap up and end our lesson. Martha did not become bitter and say, well, I'll never work another potluck again. I'll never do another thing like that again. The Bible says in John 12 and verse 1, then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, which uh, where Lazarus uh, was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead, and they made him a supper. Watch this. And Martha served. So Martha didn't stop doing what she was doing in serving people. She continued to serve people, and this is... Uh, less than uh, just about a week until Jesus is going to die on the cross. She's still following Jesus. She's not upset. She's still doing the work that she's always done. But in my mind, I see a little bit of change in Martha. She recognizes that there are things that are more important. So she served. And Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with them. So she continues to serve. But I want you to notice what happens in verse 3. Then Mary took a pound of ointment, a spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. So Mary is still thinking along the same lines, spiritual things. Martha's continuing to serve, no indication that she's upset with what Mary does at all. Now Judas Iscariot in verse 4, Simon's son, the one that would betray him, he says in verse 5, why, is, why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? <laughs> Mary can't catch a break. <laughs> <laughs> now, now Judas is fussing at her. Well, you should have sold that and given it to the poor. Verse 6, he said that not because he cared for the poor, <laughs> but because he was a thief and he had the bag and he bare that which was put therein. So he, he viewed that as a loss of income from him. And so here is Judas with this uh, bad and ill motives. And Jesus said, let her alone. Leave her alone. Against the day of my bearing hath she kept this. So we're not going to read any further into that. But I think we understand the point that there are jobs that need to be done. There are jobs of service that need to be done every day. And I, I think that I can say with all sincerity that the men appreciate so much everything that you ladies do everything that you do behind the scenes to make sure things work and run as smoothly as they possibly can but also understand ladies that jesus said that there is something that is more important than making sure every meal is prepared just right and the the, the house looks just like this or whatever and jesus said you need to also understand spiritual things are more important than fleshly things. And I want to say, brethren, we need to emphasize that. We need to understand the spiritual thing is the most important thing. And don't ever allow this attitude that Martha developed to say, well, you know, we've got to get this done, we've got to get this done, and we neglect spiritual things. That's not right. God never intended for it to be that way. And so Jesus very tenderly and very passionately reminds Martha, yes, service is good, but you need to understand the spiritual is more important. And I hope 
as men that we will appreciate the ladies and what they do a little bit more. I would also hope that we would also recognize if we're corrected for doing something, don't get mad and quit. Just look at it and say, well, that's legitimate and I need to change. And that's what we see in this beautiful Christian lady. So this morning, I want us to recognize that, yes, service is a part of the work of God. And, and helping people meet their physical needs, the Bible stresses that over and over again. But don't forget the spiritual. Don't forget the spiritual. And I would say to us as men of the congregation, you know, we oftentimes help people that are, that are in need that maybe come to the congregation and they're needing money for gas or money for food or money to help pay the rent or whatever it is. And, and we're often very generous and helpful in that. But brethren, don't forget, paying a bill is great, but we need to make sure and talk to that person about their spiritual needs. <clears throat> Are you okay spiritually? Are you right with God? And don't ever let the physical things of life override the spiritual things of life. And I think that's really the point of this story that we've just read. I hope uh, if you're not a Christian, that you look and see that, that Mary chose that which was most important. To make sure you're right spiritually. And you need to make that choice this morning. If you're not a child of God, then we'll study with you if that's necessary. If appropriate, we'll baptize you into this Christ. If you are a believing, penitent individual willing to confess that Jesus is the Christ, we'll baptize you this very hour. As one of God's children, maybe you simply need prayers, encouragement. If we can help, please come as we stand and as we sing.